It is 7.30 p.m. Tuesday, August 27th, 2024. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the, this special meeting of the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Will the secretary call the roll? Sure. President Hill? Here. Vice President Smalley? Here. Uh, Director Lang? Here. Director Larry? Here. Director Fultz? Here. All right, we got everyone in attendance. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Changes to the closed session agenda. Additions to the agenda, if any, may only be made in accordance with California Government Code Section 54954.2, Ralph M. Brown Act, which includes but is not limited to additions for which the need to take action is declared to have arisen after the agenda was posted as determined by a two thirds vote of the board of directors, or if less than two thirds of the members are present, a unanimous vote of, vote of those members present. Do we have any changes to the closed session agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to oral communications regarding items in closed session. This portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public for items which are on the closed session portion of the agenda. Any person may address the board of directors at this time on closed session items. Normally presentations must not exceed three minutes in length and individuals may only speak once during oral communications. Please state your name and town city of residence at the beginning of your statement for the record. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none on the floor and none online. We will move forward and the next item on the agenda is adjournment to closed session. Anytime during the regular session, the board may adjourn to closed session in compliance with and as authorized by California government's code section 54956.9 and Brown Act, government code section 54950. Members of the public will be given the opportunity to address any scheduled item prior to adjourning to closed session. <clears throat> okay. We are, I see we have no um, people in the audience in the room. And we have to- Nobody online. Nobody online? What about these? Well, they'll be on the-, the No, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're now going to adjourn to closed session. Okay. Okay, we'll call the open session back into Order. Will the secretary call the roll? Yes. President Hill? Present. Vice President Smalley? Yes. I am here, but I am not feeling well right now, and I'm going to need to excuse myself from this rest of the meeting. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. No worries. Feel better. Okay. Thanks. Director Lane? Here. Director Largate? Here. Director Fultz? Here. Okay. Thank you. Time. We're back in session. Report out from closed session. The board has formed a committee consisting of Bob Fultz and me to identify the process and start a search for a temporary general manager. And that's all we have to report. Changes to the agenda, additions to the agenda, if any, may be made in accordance with California Government Code 54954.2, Ralph M. Brown Act, which includes but is not limited to additions for which the need to take action is declared to have arisen after the agenda was posted as determined by a two thirds vote of the board of directors, or if less than two thirds of the members are present, a unanimous vote of those members present. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Okay, do we have anybody online with any changes? Nobody online has a hand up. Okay. Okay, oral communications, portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public on any subject that lies within the jurisdiction of the district and is not on the agenda. 
Any person may address the board of directors at this time. Normally, presentations must not exceed three minutes in length. Individuals may only speak once. Please understand the Brown Act limits what the board can do regarding issues not on the agenda. No action or discussion may occur on issues outside of those already listed on today's agenda. Any director may request that a matter raised during oral communication be placed on a future agenda. Do we have any oral communications from the public? Do we have any online? Yes, you have one online. Yes. Um, where am I? Karen by Kelly. Yeah. Okay. Um, Karen Vitale. Uh, good, e good evening. Um, I understand from this discussion that um, then uh, Ryan Bruce is no longer um, interim general manager of the district. Is this correct? I think we will not comment on that tonight. Okay. Um, so I want to express the concern. I think that um, that without uh, that, we're in a very critical time for the consolidation, as you're all aware from frequently hearing us telling you that. I'm sure by now. Um, and I would like to say that uh, it's greatly concerning to have a change of leadership at this point, and. Um, that we are in a situation where time is of the essence and moving forward with consolidation activities. Um, and I, I think that, you know, the board has multiple different times, uh, including the letters of intent, but also in multiple different resolutions issued, for example, um, October 7th, 2021. Then again, another uh, resolution in this year in, um, in, in May, and then subsequent that the funding decision that was made in July, um, you've offered to, you've restated multiple times your support for the consolidation. But my concern is one of very practical, task oriented. Um, how are we going to get the bid package out the door? How are the bids going to be assessed? Has the drinking water? Um, I'm sorry, the, the, the state fund been contacted with regard to changing the scope um, there's, and extending the, the, the timeline for the project. Are those things happening? Who is the point person that we should be working with to make sure all of these time critical activities happen? So do you have somebody appointed for that critical activity? Uh, are we still then um, working with Ryan Fruess and he's making those things happen? Those are those are very critical things for us right now. And is there a way that we can learn from you very soon what happens next for this project? We can't let it slip through the cracks because of this personnel change at this moment. So I don't really have any answer that I can give you at this time. When would there be an answer? When can we have an answer? That has not been fully determined. So we'll have to take this offline and discuss it with you at some point here very shortly. Okay. Um, so would you like me to use the contact form on your website to give you my information and also give you the information of the president of our board at Forest Springs so that you can be in contact with one or both of us? Board members, any thoughts on that? Um, I, th I think, I think any, it's, anybody, fine to, it's fine to use the, the Anybody form can send contact. that information. Yeah, yeah, that's public information. It's fine to use the form and contact me. Okay, yeah, so we appreciate it. And, and as we've said multiple times, we want to collaborate and move this forward. But but frankly, uh, wow, this is a really rough time for this all to be unfolding. And uh, whatever's unfolding here, um, we just can't let this ball drop. 
or the grant is dis is going to disappear. It's a three point two million dollar ball we're about to drop here. Thank you for your, uh, thank you yeah. for your input. Okay, thank you very much for listening to that and understanding our concern. We'll look forward to hearing from you very soon. Thank you. Yes. Do we have any other oral communications? Yes, Paige Moorhead. Hi, yes, thank you so much. Um, this is Paige Moorhead, the president of Brackenbray. Um, I agree that we are at a critical juncture in regards to our consolidation um, and moving forward. Um, respectfully, I'd like to say that the previous general manager has not followed the guidelines set out in our LOI, which is set back and break back. Um, we are moving forward and we'd like to move forward um, with this board. And so I support the decision to look for a new general manager who has the qualities that we need to move our project forward. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much. Um, Mike Judd. Unmute. Okay. Hello. Yeah, my name is Mike Judd. I am the interim vice president of Four Springs. And one of the things that Karen brought up was that we need to know how far these discussions have gone with the DWR. Because without this change in in the extension in time and the change of scope, we are back to square one with the consolidation. I mean, it was voted on July 18th to move forward with forward with, with phase one using the grant money and money from SLB. And then it needed to get cleared through DWR. So Brian was in the process of doing that. Now Brian is apparently no longer. You know, I'm be honest with you, I am very disappointed with the way the board has acted in this whole process. You've you've allowed people to to lead you guys down the merry path and give you an idea that everything is all screwed up. Well, it's not. You know, Brian was attacked. He was uh, demonized because he didn't agree with an alternative plan that Brackenbray put forward. That same plan we have asked Brackenbray for several times, and they have yet to give us that plan. So it's really hard to act collaboratively with a, with a partner, a supposed partner, when we don't even know what the hell we're talking about. So, you know, I, I, I don't feel that Brackenbray has actively collaborated with moving forward with this project, with Brian and his staff, with you, the board, or Four Springs. What we need from the board is that we need the board to be more involved and not take sides and deal with everything as a whole community and not part of the community, which seems to be what's happening. So that's my take on things. What we really need, like Karen said, is to find out where we are right now and where do we go forward. We can't let this thing sit. Thank you. Thank you for your input. I see no further online comments and none in the room. So we are done with oral communications. We have no unfinished business. New business uh, authorized signatories. We have a resolution here to amend the authorized signatories, including by facsimile signature for banking service of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District accounts. The Background, the San Lorenzo Valley Water District is currently seeking a new general manager to carry out the day-to-day -day operations of the district in the interim to continue day-to-day -day operations. Amending of authorized signers on district bank accounts is required. The resolution provides for the following. Allow board president Jeff Hill and board director Bob Fultz to be authorized signers on district bank accounts. The signature of one member of the board of directors would be required to authorize the payment or withdrawal of money from district bank accounts. An additional signature would be required to authorize the payment or withdrawal of money from district bank accounts in an amount greater than $10,000.
the district secretary would also be authorized to take all necessary and proper actions as directed by the district's board of directors or its banking institutions to allow for the amendment to the district's authorized signers on district bank accounts. To existing staff signers, engineering manager Garrett Roth and director of operations James Furtado are proposed to remain as authorized signers. Um, there has been no prior committee action on this subject. Uh, it's not applicable. Uh, there's no fiscal impact. There's no cost to this. The environmental impact uh, is an administrative activity, will not result in direct or indirect physical changes to the environment. Oops. So we have a detailed resolution here. Um, do we need to read the entire resolution? I don't think so. Um, and the resolution covers exactly what I discussed. And I will comment that this is important that we get this done because at the moment uh, we are uh, somewhat blocked in terms of paying bills and until Director Fulce and I are able to uh, sign checks and get the process moving, um, we need to uh, we need to move. Let's put it that way. Do we have a someone who will move this? I can move it. I will second. Okay. okay. Comments from the public? You know, the board policy manual says that you'll have public comment for a motion. And well, here's your insult. chance. I think it's an insult to, to make a motion when you have not heard from the public. It is in the board policy manual. I understand that. So you, you now have your chance, and we're happy to hear. So I think you should have clarified at the beginning that the memo that the, the resolution you're talking about is not what was in the packet. Um, I came down here tonight because I read the resolution that was in the packet. And when I came here, I found this hard copy version. Mm -hmm. which is different than what's online. So I guess I'm partly I'm wondering, will this be posted? This is not online right now. Should be posted. Yeah, we will yeah, post, we'll it. post it. I just put it up in the agenda because yes. it was, came in after the time. Yeah, this came in late from our legal counsel. Yeah, so I've read two memos of the legal <laughs> counsel both dated today. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always thought that the board acted as a body. Um, no board member has any authority, but the board has authority as a whole when three of you can agree. Mm -hmm. uh, so three board members can do anything, and one or two cannot do much of anything. And I guess you, I don't, I don't understand if you've read the what was in the packet or, or not, but um, the memo in the packet didn't have any employees authorized at all, only five board members. Uh, and I guess I, I certainly This is a newer version. Yeah, newer version, right. Well, I guess that needs to be clarified. Yes. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, so I see two employees here. And the, oh, by the way, the, at the bottom of the memo, it says the signature of one member of the board of directors would be required. But what it says at the bottom of the resolution is a uh, bank is authorized to pay the drafts bearing the signature of one person listed in the attachment, which has four people and two of them are employees. Um, so if I read the resolution, one employee can sign a check for up to $10,000 mm -hmm. or one board member, mm -hmm. but it's not required to have a board member authorize anything according to the resolution. So there's a difference between what the memo says and what the resolution says. 
Um, and basically, I think it's a bad idea to have board members signing these things. Uh, I can imagine when a board member comes down and has a check present presented to them, I, I think they're going to roll aside. I don't think a board member is going to do the kind of due diligence that is really needed on every single payment to make sure that there's a budget for it, to make sure it's got authorizations, to make sure the goods and services are received, to make sure that the check hasn't already been paid, uh, to make sure that there's sufficient funds available, uh, and so on. So I think that uh, signing checks is really a job for an employee and shouldn't involve board members at all. I'm sorry that there's so few employees that you can give this task to. Mm -hmm. I think I'd rather see the district secretary listed here than any board member. Um, and I, I really question whether this is consistent with the water code to give individual directors this kind of authority. Two directors could write a million dollar check. And that just seems completely wrong to me. Jeff, you might want to have Barbara. Yeah, I have Barbara. Sorry? I have Barbara red dress. Barbara, would you like to comment on that? I'll have, um, in, in the first instance, have Heather comment um, just to make it clear what, what's happening and what and why you need to do it this way um, so that we can get some clarification in that regard. But it, 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 and, and I'll just add to that, I'm sorry, that there's a whole set of uh, safeguards before a check gets signed by anybody, whether it's an employee or in this instance, a board member, none of those safeguards are being taken away. Go ahead, Heather. Thank you, Barbara. The purpose of this policy is to add um, some separation of duties. So you've got the directors, the, for instance, the engineering manager and the director of operations, they're approving their invoices of the work that is happening in their departments. From there, that information is entered into the software system. And normally the, um, the general manager would then approve it in the software system, reviewing it for budget and all of the things that were mentioned by the member of the public. In this case, they're actually putting me in that place so that uh, there is someone other than the finance staff doing that review. And then only at that point is it submitted for a payment. So all of the review that was mentioned is happening. And unfortunately, there is not enough staff at this point at the level high enough to implementing a policy with a separation of duties. So no, it's, we don't necessarily want board and I don't think the board wants to be involved in the operations of the day-to-day -day business. But at this point, we are asking that the board participate so that there is a separation of duties. And I'm also strengthening strengthening the, um, the level of, of controls on the back end. For instance, um, I found out that the, the, the checks are being held in a safe but everybody has the combination. So I'm changing things. I just found that out today and I'm changing things like that. Um, I was also gonna add that once this information is given to the bank, there's actually different levels of signing. So the, the, um, the board member is the first level that's the level that actually gets into the into the system. All of the checks, when they're printed, automatically have a signature on them, and that will be the board member. And then an additional signature will be needed for the checks over 10,000. So there's a lot of people that are reviewing these invoices before they're even submitted for payment. And, and one more, the, the um, the staff that are actually on this list are not the ones that can sign a check, the first signature. They can only be the second signature. The way the bank is the bank um, is set up, the bank process. Thank you, Heather. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Is there any further discussion? 
Bob? I just did want to say that I thought Heather's discussion was appropriate separation of duties. Yes. Um, Barbara, you may want to provide a little bit more background on on the fact that board members are legally able to do this in this kind of a situation, correct? Yes, that's correct. They can yeah, that, step in and they're not operating the system or taking over as a management position. And and the intent is this would only last until such time as we had a temporary general manager. Exactly. So very short period of time. Yeah, this is as this short is, uh, as we can possibly make it. Correct. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. okay. We have a motion. We have a second. We've had comments. Okay. Call the roll. Okay. President Hill. Yes. Director Lang. Yes. Director Largay. Yes. Director Fultz. Yes. Okay. It's unanimous. Okay, consent agenda, no, no, well, we have no more new business. Consent agenda, we have nothing on the consent agenda. We have no district reports tonight. We have no written communications. We have received no informational material. Uh, meetings adjourned. All right. Thank you all. <laughs>